Hello everyone, welcome back to Navy for them. Today I bring you a little update of the two things, the two most important things for us naval players in the last developer Q&A. So without further ado, let's go straight to the sausage, as they say. Well, we might say here straight to the baguette. I'm not making it sound any better, am I? Anyway. So if we've got the article in front of us, we just need to scroll down and go to the naval part of it. We start with a very compelling first image that I think it's uh, very appropriate because it doesn't matter the, the nationality here. The important thing about this image is that it portrays a crew that is getting the vessel ready for action, for a trip, for whatever. They are just getting ready to departure. They are painting the, the vessel, whatever, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that they're getting ready. That's what I get from it. And if we read the first question, is there any news or developments you can tell us about the development of the French coastal and blue water fleets? And the developer says, stay tuned for news. They're not saying coming soon or anything. They say stay tuned for news and that is the rhetoric that they normally use when it is coming in the next major update. This is a speculation but this is where my hopes stand and I can I think it is a reasonable expectation to have because they have used that rhetoric before and because it implies that it's not really immediate but it might be happening soon. And if France gets released, that update should be called a major update because of the sheer amount of units that we are going to get. Because remember, this is a speculation, but we are expecting that as France was a major actor in the modern naval history, that they're going to get, as the other nations, a full-fledged tech tree which that means that it's going to be comprised of a coastal tech tree and a blue water fleet tech tree. And that is how we players expect Gaijin to do it, to get both tech trees. And we are expecting also that France is going to get added up to, to 7.0. But we honestly don't know, because France is the very first nation that is going to get a naval arm added to it since the initial nations were added back in 2018. So if we put aside our hopes and if we try and think realistically about this new French addition to the game, what can we expect? So I think we're gonna get the two tech trees, the coastal and the blue water fleet from the beginning and I think we're gonna get a lot of pre-war World War II designs on it because France had a major fleet during those events. On the coastal tech tree I expect them to release one main line with mainly gunboats and maybe a second one with torpedo boats and at the end of it a little candy which might be a mine layer or a patrol boat or a post-war modern vessel maybe with the capability of launching missiles something like that something to look forward to grind that tech tree for the blue water fleet i expect them to do something very similar one main line and maybe a little secondary one but here i think it's going to be full of world war ii designs and maybe at the end of it we are going to get one of those interwar battle cruisers or one of the post-World War I designs, battleship designs of the French Navy. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be the later option. I don't think we're going to get the Dunkirk at the release. It would be amazing, but I don't think Gaijin's going to do that. For obvious reasons. And before we continue with the questions and answers, let's just discuss another two points before we finish with all this French uh, talk. And these are why you should be hyped with the French addition and what might the French Navy addition imply to the actual game. So you should be hyped about the French addition to the game because of the French naval doctrine around the outbreak of the Second World War. And their designs reflect the two major problems that they faced around this era. 
and it was that as a colonial nation they had to cover very long distances and to be able to fight in very open water scenarios but also they have to keep in mind that they had the Mediterranean which is also vital and right next to your doorstep and a much more confined area and this translated into conventional designs and others that went so conventional and those are the ones that I'm really looking forward to get in the game. And the last thing that I want to comment on the French addition to the game is that this addition might mean a halt, a complete stop on the big gun race that we have nowadays. And that's it, hopefully, because I think we are getting into the big guns a bit too early. Not all of the nations are ready for it, like Italy. France is not even in game yet. So before we get things like Yamatos, Iowa's, Nagatos and King George the Fifths and Nelson's and things like that, we need to get the main actors in France and we need to get all the battle cruisers and all the little caliber battleships out of the way. I'm looking at the Andrea Doria Rifet and the Julio Cesare and all those. We need to get them before we add big, massive caliber guns, battleships to the game. Because those big gun designs are going to render obsolete anything underneath them until the addition of submarines and post-World War II, Cold War, modern guided missile ships to the game. Okay, so moving on to the second question. What we have here is, this is a very simple one. The previous update brought some variety of camo options for destroyers in all nations. Is it possible we will see customization for the small coastal vessels and the return of many of the skins from back during the close testing of naval forces? And <laughs> obviously the answer to that is a yes. Such customization options both for ships and boats are planned for the upcoming updates. As I said, obviously they gonna answer that. Maybe the question here was when this is going to happen or how or in which order or maybe what happened to the cruisers what happened to the battleships why they have been left out <laughs> oh well until the next uh, this one is uh, particularly interesting for me because i don't know it seems like propaganda here it does say at the moment naval gaming modes look suspended such a nice word there but i don't agree with that i think I think he means that there's not much being added, or at least at the same speed that it does in the other different modes. Skip on reading here. On the one hand, we have AB and RB sessions, which are to arcade. I kind of agree, because to be honest, I would like to see a more simulator-oriented RB keeping the third person view on the planes and on the ships, but taking away some of the things that come like an extra or are redundant like for example having the radar and the map in the hood at the very same time for the sake of immersion and to give the radar the importance that it had i would get rid of the map i would take it away from the main hood and leave it to the vehicle selection screen that you can always check during a battle and remember this is just an example going back to the article on the other hand, naval enduring confrontation with massive battles. I don't agree with this. Um, yeah, the maps are bigger, but the battles aren't. And in fact, they are smaller or at best of the same size as a regular game. Because even though you have more players inside these games, you also have a much larger area. These massive maps, what they do is divide the map into different places where you can spawn and thus dividing the players into different zones making different pockets different small battles going on at the same time in the same map but they are not interconnected normally players in one of those battles cannot affect the outcome of one of the others because of the sheer size of the map the only real connection that exists between those little battles going on simultaneously in the same big map is the score. So calling naval enduring confrontation 
massive battles, I don't think it's precise. The only thing massive in naval and during confrontation is the duration of the battle and the ranges, the size of the map. And it continues with same dynamic tasks, like what? Like a carrier going around randomly, like a headless chicken with three or four destroyer escorts that they get very dangerously close to the enemy team well that is stupid not immersive and not dynamic because there are no variables in this particular task that can call this a dynamic one because it always produces the same result you need to spot the carrier you need to destroy the carrier you get the points for it that's it it's always the same. It's not dynamic. You call that a dynamic task just because it's moving. And that is the second most simple interaction that a player can expect from a game's objective. The most simple one is static objectives. And we've got plenty of examples of those in War Thunder, don't we? The carrier is considered a dynamic task just because it's moving. And, oh well, that's not correct. Or maybe what he's talking about here is about the convoy. Again, it's a bunch of AI ships that are moving from point A to point B. They always follow the same route. Doesn't matter if they get attacked or not. And in certain maps, they periodically get attacked by bombers. Again, that is not very dynamic. There is always the two very same outcomes to that task. It is that you succeed on doing it or you don't there are no ifs there are nothing that connects to the results with another mission there is no variables in it it's always repetitive it's always the same if you accomplish it you take away some tickets from the enemy team score there's nothing variable in that there's no different outcomes it's always the same that is not dynamic maybe he means here the you know, destroy the scout plane thing, destroy um, the bombers, um, destroy the bomber targets that are scattered around the map, or the achieve air superiority at a certain point in the map. And I'm really sorry, those, first, those are not dynamic as well, and second, those are air and during confrontation objectives, those are not naval those are even more harmful to naval and during confrontation because those are taking away players from the naval aspect and taking them to a different layer and one that is not in connection to the different little battles that are happening simultaneously in a big massive map making the interactions between players more scarce as time goes on in the game and more towards more oriented towards AI farming. And then he talks about progressive spawn. And with that, I think he means about, you know, when you conquer an enemy port that you can spawn on that one so you can progressively advance through the map. That is just not very immersive. It is really gamey. It is a very basic arcade mechanic which feels obsolete here and I do completely agree with that but not so much with the other statements that's why I think it's a bit of propaganda here but the question's not this the question is that he asked for where will naval battles go will it be more arcade or realistic do you plan to introduce some kind of simulated battles based on the enduring confrontation and the answer again is in my eyes is very obvious he says that we plan to develop both modes we don't know which two is it arcade and rb or is it arcade rb and enduring confrontation and then he says simulator battles are not planned and well i think i really hope that they mean that they are gonna work on arcade and realistic battles but also in the enduring confrontation i really hope that and naval enduring confrontation is not gonna stay like this because it's a mess it's so badly implemented in my eyes then simulator battles are not planned they are out of the equation right now and in my eyes thankfully so because they need to concentrate on what they have and what they have is arcade realistic and during confrontation and world war mode with the naval side of it so i'm glad in a way that they're not gonna diverge into a completely different mode just now it really feels like the most sensible thing to do and sorry about the rant of the naval and during confrontation but to me it has been a truly and a big 
disappointment. And on to the next question. Do you plan to introduce a second flight mode for scout planes in naval battles? Yes, of course he's going to say yes and that they plan to improve it. The question here is why it wasn't in from the beginning and when are you going to implement it? And he says, we plan to improve this mode and add it to the game in the upcoming updates. Well, that's good news because with that, we don't have the information of when is it going to happen. It might be one or two updates or it might be after a dozen of updates that it is upcoming enough for them to release a feature that should have been there from the beginning of the scout plane mechanic implementation. And the last one, which is also a little bit more cryptic just because the way it's worded. It does say that, do you plan to revisit the damage from fragments which reportedly calculate only explosive weight of a cell? At the moment, the damage to the crew compartments of ships deal only with external explosion with no damage to the compartment from explosions inside. And he says, we have just checked the damage mechanics of the fragments inside compartments. All works as intended, right as before. At the moment, we see no reason to revisit the fragment damage to the crew compartments. And when I finished reading this, I wanted to bang my head against the wall because I thought he was talking about the HE book with the base fuse and HE and semi armor piercing shells, the Amorak uh, battle cruisers, heavy cruisers, battleships, anything in its way without an apparent armor degradation sometimes. But no, the question is about how the fragments interact with the crew compartments. Something that the developer answers happily that is working as intended. You know what? Sound. But the reason why I want to bang my head again against the wall is because the main bug that is actually happening every day and it's ruining gameplay, there's nothing about it in these questions and answers. And there's another issue that is also real bad and it's about the pots. And there's nothing about it in these questions and answers. And I do get that nobody wants to talk about the bad stuff. But maybe this was an occasion where a developer could have tried to communicate with its community even if he's not asked about it because these two are the main issues with the game right now and if you don't talk about them they are not going to disappear they are still there they are still happening but i don't know maybe it was because they just didn't want to talk about these issues because they might have steal the soul from the fact that the french navy is coming in to the game soon but anyway let me know what you think about all these issues and this q a and the french navy coming in soon in the comments below and as always give us a like if you like the content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.